you, Senator, Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Part-time Chair, but now we got the, the real guy back. Um, so first of all, I mean, I think the premise of this hearing is just completely off. Uh, and I think the chart that uh, the chairman talked to you about, Mr. Musselin, is uh, indicative of that. So the, the Florida Hurricane Catastrophic Fund or Catastrophe Fund has a shortfall for a year about $7 billion, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So we, we've had testimony before this committee that we've already spent five to six trillion dollars. That's 5,000 to 6,000 billion dollars trying to mitigate climate change. We haven't made a dent in it. You know, their estimates are it's going to cost tens of trillions of dollars every year to heat to, to reach net zero. So again, that, this is not the solution for a real problem, which is the broken insurance market. I have enough Wisconsin residents live on the Gulf Coast in Florida to know after Hurricane Ian, we've got some real problems in Florida. But fixing climate change isn't the solution. So there are other causes, and that's what I really want to focus on with you, Dr. Anatoni. Uh, you talked about inflation. You talked about riots and lawlessness. You talked about high cost of, of properties being located in these vulnerable areas. And then, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, or Commissioner Moretti talked about the harmful regulations, you know, price caps. So can you, off the top of your head, and no, nobody's calculated this, but can you give me some sense of what percentage of the, of the total problem is each one of those elements? I mean, how, how much of, let's say it's $100 billion worth of a problem here. How much of that is due to inflation? How much to the, the lawlessness, the, the riots? How much to uh, the high cost of properties? And then how much has been just from market distortions of, of uh, pricing caps and that type of thing? Senator, it's a very good question. The, the only caveat I want to say in answering this is that much of the regulatory costs actually get rolled into what, what we attribute to inflation. The reason for that is because typically these regulatory costs, uh, because it's something being done by government mandate, those are essentially assumed away under a hedonic adjustment. So if we can just talk about government action broadly and include both a, a failure to respond to criminal activity and inflation and regulatory costs, that explains 90% approximately of the increase that we have seen in insurance premiums over the last several years. But, but I want to zero more. What do you think inflation is that component? I mean, oh. just, just straight inflation. I mean, again, I know it's government action, but mm -hmm. that government action, what, what, it, what percent of inflation? Is that half? Is it a quarter? Uh, probably about three quarters, almost three quarters, uh, Senator. Mr. Senator Moretti, Johnson, can you, yeah, you, uh, you confirm that? Or? I, I just have a personal and timely example on, on the impact of inflation. About six months ago, we had our roof replaced in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And um, 18 months prior, I had a proposal to have the roof replaced. And in that 18 months, almost to the day, 18 months, same roofer, same roof, same materials, that cost had increased exactly 30% from $20,000 to $26,000 for a roof that strictly impact on material and labors. Okay, so that's One overall, roof. I mean, Florida is a just different animal here, right? I mean, I mean, Florida's insurance market is completely screwed up because of hurricanes, because of probably regulation, that type of thing. I mean, insurance conceptually is pretty simple. You know, we all pay a little bit in to protect ourselves against a catastrophic loss and with the marketplace it moves around. If it's priced properly, it discourages people from putting high cost properties in a very vulnerable area, but it hasn't been priced properly, right? So I guess I, I'm kind of wondering for a Wisconsin resident with a Wisconsin house, how much are our insurance premiums being boosted because of the distortions of the marketplace because of overregulation? Now, in other words, are, are we paying the price for all these hurricanes in, in Florida because the Florida insurance market is just screwed up. You have reinsurance companies that are losing uh, money. And by the way, how, you did talk about uh, high losses. What is that? I mean, how, how, how big a loss was this last year? And is that just loss premium versus uh, payments, or did this go into reserves? Because isn't that the whole point? You get premiums, you set up reserves, you have a loss. Generally, the reserves ought to cover the loss, right? You shouldn't be taking them out of premiums. Premiums ought to just be continuing to fill up those reserves. Mr. Yes. Mulready. Yes, th thank you. And uh, I, I hate to oversimplify it, but sometimes I, I do when speaking publicly back in my state, and that is that, you know, it's, it's not rocket science, it's math. <laughs> it is premiums in and claims paid out. Uh, and then what, what's the end result? Of course, there's investments, other things in there. I'm oversimplifying it. 
but um, it, it is math, and so the insurance companies are, are, have the role of determining what, what that math's gonna be. How, what, what do those storms look like? I mean, in Oklahoma, we, get hit, we, have, we have had a terrible spring. We have had 100 tornadoes this year, um, but the previous three years, previous four years, we were substantially below our, our average. So, uh, you know, we, we've, had a, we've had a rough year. We've had two EF2s, um, and, and the, so the companies will absorb that. Um, our role is to make sure they're financially solvent. They have risk-based capital that we monitor uh, quarterly, and if they're investing in things that uh, they shouldn't be investing, investing in or we have concerns, Heck, if, if a company drops a certain percentage of, uh, of their surplus, they get a letter from me saying, what's your plan? You've, you've dropped a bit here a little too much uh, in this past year. And so that's, that's what we're monitoring to make sure they can be there to pay their claims. And like I said, we've had one company leave. We've had no property guilty companies exit the market. But so, you've got to have that freedom and so, flexibility so, to price so properly. One quick comment, closing comment, is this hearing ought to be called Riskier Business, How Massive Deficit Spending, Which Caused Inflation, is challenging the insurance markets. Would you kind of agree with that, Mr. Antoni? I could not agree more, Senator. Thank you.